welcome to another edition of uh, Military in Uniform here in Hawaii. And my host, I'm Calvin Griffin, I forgot my own name. Anyhow, uh, for those of you who may not have seen the program before, here we talk about what's happening with the veterans and military community. Uh, a little bit later in the program, we'll be talking with uh, Kim and uh, Leah Lavelle. Uh, they have an operation uh, dealing with wound care that's really revolutionary. They're trying to get into the VA system. And um, we'll give you an update on what's happening. Uh, but today, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to be talking with uh, Jeremy, who's a former military member, and I want to welcome you to the program. Oh, thank you, Cal. Uh, it's great to be here. Aloha. Um, konnichiwa. Buenos dias. Um, hey, Alma. I see you're multilingual. Well, you know, you got to be these days. You, know. sure. you got to yeah. get around and, and do some things with you know, what little time we have here. That's for sure. Uh, a little bit about yourself. Like say, your previous military, Marine. Um, uh, my military service started in uh, August uh, 1995. Uh, I was with the uh, U.S. Army as a uh, 91 Alpha, which is biomedical equipment technician and medic. Um, I left the military, I left the Army in uh, January 1999, joined the United States Navy active duty as a uh, fire controlman agent, um, computer weapons uh, technician. And then I went back to the Army after 9-11, after a, um, an incident, which I was involved in a motorcycle wreck. Um, I went back to the Army as a uh, civil affairs specialist, mm -hmm. um, doing cultural area analysts for the uh, uh, Civil Affairs Airborne Brigade. Yeah. Good. Uh, you did a couple of combat tours? Yes, I, uh, I did one combat tour with the Navy. Uh, I was deployed to um, uh, the northern, what we call the NAG, the Northern Arabian Gulf, um, after the attack on the USS Cole. I was yeah. on the sister ship, which is, my sister ship is in the news right now, which was the uh, USS Fitzgerald DDG-62. Yeah. Uh, we always hear about what's happening with, uh, with, with the veterans and, you know, other related issues with the active duty. As far as the dialogue that you hear, what, what do you think is good? Is there an honest dialogue that's going on concerning the veterans in the military right now? I think the, the majority of honest dialogue is being done at the lower levels. Okay, what we're talking about and We were talking about your regular soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines that are sitting around having conversations at picnics, barbecues, um, day in and day out conversations. Um, where I think maybe one of the major disconnects in which the, the VA and, and the Veterans Administration is, uh, has at least attempting some form of outreach through their surveys, um, maybe the disconnect is, is the higher up branching yeah. um, where they, they've kind of step back and at, at now they kind of step back and just like well let's send out some surveys and see what they say yeah and more or less to get figure in the wind and see how it lies anyhow yeah it's one of the right. things that uh, you know I talked about here in the program is some issues that um, make some people in the higher up uncomfortable because in the past programs we talked about birth defects in the in the military mm -hmm. uh, also the DD 214s the issue with secret codes things of that nature and it seems, you know, it really, um, we see it reflected sometime in a lack of services. I okay, guess some good stuff out there, but we all know, we've heard of instances of suicides, things of that nature that, um, you know, affect the family members of the veterans in the military that aren't actively talked about. It seems like every time there's something that hits the news that they can control, then there's some new program that comes up where well, we're taking proactive steps and then after it fades away, then we're back to business as usual as far as not really addressing the real issues that concern a lot of uh, military and veterans, you know. Uh, with your personal experience, because I don't want to sit here and say, you know, trying to beat up on the VA because there's uh, so many horror stories going on, but with your experiences with the VA, how has it been overall? Um, my experience with the VA has had its ups and downs. Um, I was actually turned away from the VA initially. Um, this is prior to the um, institution of, or the verbiage being used of PTSD. 
Um, this is prior to 9-11. Um, shortly after I left the Airborne um, in 2006 from a unit in Jackson, Mississippi, um, I had some issues with the VA. Um, a lot of them dealt with um, claims. Uh, it took almost five years um, to finally actually get something on paper. Yep. Um, some of it was PTSD related, some of it was physically related. Um, and even that in of itself took uh, some, some time. Yeah, that's the problem that um, seems to be prevalent where, getting back to the code, you mentioned PTSD. Mm -hmm. Nowadays it seems they have so many different syndromes, they got one in particular called the um, immature personality development, something like that, where they're discharging people. Or, you know, one instance I know of where a gentleman, you know, gentleman has spent uh, three combat tours. Mm -hmm. When he comes back, it's like, oh, you know, we found out that you're not mature enough for the military, you know, and lost most of his benefits, you know, we've mm -hmm. got it. And all these different things that, you know, they're not talking about, and it makes a lot of military members wonder and are concerned for their future, is this going to happen to me, you know? And I know we talked offline and we talked to different, you know, um, service members out there. And there's a major concern, like say that, am I next on the chopping block, you know? And a lot of people in the uh, civilian side, the only thing they hear about, you know, is the high pay and everything else. But not everybody in the, in the military or, you know, veterans are suffering. But there's too many that are, that fall through the cracks. And... Again, the dialogue doesn't seem to be there, and that disconnect between the people who are making the policies and who those are being affected by. It. And again, it translates into all kind of you know, social ills, you know, because if the military or the VA is not taking care of the veterans, then when they go back to the communities, then it come, they become sort of a burden on you know, the taxpayers in a different way. So it's just been shifted from one, you know, dynamic to another as far as with the um, services. And any comments on that? Well, the, the main comment and concern that I have is, um, you know, we've been at war since August 1990. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look at any VA document pamphlet, um, it'll state the criteria to be considered a veteran. Mm -hmm. um, you had to serve in a time of war. And then it'll give you the dates of those wars. It'll tell you if you served from World War II from this date to this date. If you said you served in Vietnam from this date to this date. And currently, the uh, VA pamphlet will show you that the Persian Gulf War, August 1990, to a date yet to be set by presidential decree or congressional or whatever have you. So my main concern is from 1990, August 1995, to current date today, and moving forward without an end in sight. We're talking about a lot of veterans, a lot of mm -hmm. veterans. And I can train or be trained, or you can be trained as you were, um, and any individual can be trained to a certain level to perform a certain task. Right. In the military, it is easier to train you to do the job than it is to prepare you for it. Okay. Because you can't get prepared until you actually do it. Right. Now, once you actually do it, and we'll talk about the individual that was identified with immature. the immature, you can't do three combat tours and be unqualified. That's, yeah. That should have been handled in a, in early, mm -hmm. early. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the things that, that's uh, on the military side of the house. How do you sit there and say, well, we're going to screen for this. We're going to screen for this syndrome. We're going to screen for this syndrome. Um, with PTSD, especially with post-traumatic stress disorder, some of these um, instances and ailments don't even show up until after some type of event. Yeah. Um, so they could be latent. Um, we could all have it. It could, it could be a certain mental um, um, structure, foundation, how we, how we go about our thinking process of how we relate to an event. Yeah. How do I relate to you as a, as a veteran? How do I relate to you as a man? How do I relate to you as a friend? Mm -hmm. 
if something was to happen that might change that, yeah. there's nothing saying that that can't happen within, and it doesn't happen, or it does happen yeah. within a military setting. But the VA, going back to the VA's part of it, um, they, they're just now getting an understanding of like, there are different degrees to this. Yeah. But identifying different syndromes and saying, oh, well, you had this beforehand, that, that's not gonna fly. Yeah, I think that, to be, I mean, from what I see, it's like they make it up as they go along. Mm. You know, and you begin to wonder what is the rationale behind it? Is it, you know, to cost cutting savings where when yes. you do go ahead and you dump a lot of people out of the military, then you don't have to pay them, you know? Because there's so many different agencies or levels in the government, you know, like what bean counter is sitting where determining, like, say, who's going to get what, when, and how much, you mm -hmm. know? Because it does affect uh, the families, you know, in a, in a major way. You know, we both know, you know, from, I'm quite sure, with uh, your experiences, the people we've talked to, you know? Again, it reflects with the suicides, the divorces, and it's not only with the individuals who are actively serving, you know, in uniform. It has a major impact on the dependents, you know? Because mm -hmm. one thing I mentioned uh, a couple of shows back, back in 2013, something like that, if we had more uh, suicide with dependents here in the state of Hawaii than we lost combat troops worldwide. And you don't hear about things like that. That's just the tip of the iceberg, you know, mm. where all these different things. And again, it's about the dialogue. What I see for the most part, and my opinion, you please disagree if you feel like, is that we have people who are charged or asked for the responsibility of representing the veterans either locally or on a national level. And then when they don't perform up to standard or the mission that they set for themselves, then it rolls back on those individuals who are on the receiving end of all these policies, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, that's what disappoints me, you know, that we do have quite a few people, there's quite a few, few people who are dedicated, but there are people who are in positions of, again, responsibility who ask to be there who want to play the political game, who are not willing to be forthright and open and address the issues that concern a lot of veterans. Because when you're out there and you're hurting and you turn around and you expect somebody to be there for you, and then at some point you say, what's going on? I'm mm -hmm. by myself. I'm out here alone, you know? And that wears on an individual when you know that you served your country in an honorable way and they're not living up to the promises that they had prescribed. If they came out and said, okay, look, we don't have any money, whatever it is, you know, there'll be a lot of veterans out there who say, okay, I understand, you know, but just don't jerk me around, you know, and that's just what I see, you know. Well, no, um, I, actually, I concur with you 100% on that topic. Um, a lot of uh, my generation, which is uh, an X, the X generation, and now we're, the millennials are picking up from where we left off. Uh, especially with this war. Um, uh, the X generation, you know, most of us were raised by our grandparents in, in certain settings, a lot of World War II veterans, and then our parents were the Vietnam veterans. Um, through my matriculation through the military, I saw a lot um, and experienced a lot of, of, of different genres of veterans and what they were saying to me over and over and over and over again until it kind of just imprinted upon my psyche was that at the end of the day, as veterans, we're gonna have to look out for each other. Yep. Um, don't sit there and rely on the, not so much the government, but the administration under the government yep. that's been tasked with making sure that we are okay. Don't always rely on these individuals, mm. you know, but what we have to do is we have to be solid, we have to be as a group, and we have to be on our, on basically on our P's and Q's. We yep. need to know exactly what we're doing yep. and then moving forward on a particular issue. Mm -hmm. um, case in point, the Blue Water or Brown Water veterans. Um, another case in point is the uh, Agent Orange veterans from yep. um, the Marines. Yep. in Paris Island where they were exposed during the um, formulation and creation of the, the chemicals. Mm -hmm. um, we need to, hey, if you're a vet 
in Paris Island, if you're a vet in Minnesota, you know, and we have the technology available to us mm -hmm. that we can all at least be on some sort of sheet of music, which is a term that we love to use, yeah. um, and sit there and say, all right, well, what are you doing? Where are you at on this? Okay, down in Alabama, where are you at on this? California, where are you at on this? Mm -hmm. And actually have a ingrained and grassroots movement. And this falls back on what you talked about, community involvement. Where are our community involvements towards the veterans? We're going we're gonna to leave the VA out of this for a minute. Where are we helping each other? Yeah, yeah that's the thing. Because um, you mentioned, you know, being on the same sheet of music. You know, we have certain government entities want us to dance to a certain tune, mm -hmm. you know. And getting back, you know, you're absolutely right, where as far as getting the involvement of the veterans, because there's so many different programs that have been proposed to help the veterans or help them, you know, supposedly help themselves. But then it seems like when you get to a certain point, when it started looking like it may be productive, you know, and they feel that they're losing control, it's like, we got to stop this thing, you know? And that's the problem I see with, you know, you're right. We need the grassroots involvement, you know? Because for whatever reason, whatever shortcomings any government entity has who are mm -hmm. charged with looking out for the vets, if they're not doing their job, and you and I can get together and we can exchange information that's going to augment what's not being provided to us, you know, mm -hmm. that's what we need to do. Instead of sitting around waiting for a determination from someone out there in the cloud, you know, trying to determine our fate and the fate of our families. Because, again, it gets back to... The fact, you know, as far as recruitment, even national security, if you have someone that comes back to the neighborhood and family or friends say, well, look, you get screwed over. Why in the hell should I, why in the heck should I go into the military? You know, it doesn't make any sense, no. you know, and it does have a ripple effect because I mentioned this before. I think George Washington was attributed to this uh, quote that a country is judged by the way it treats its vets. And again, we're going to be judged very harshly, you know. And it's time with the a movement of foot, because anytime you start trying to do something, you know, a lot of people, they get tamped down where you start um, talking about self-reliance, community involvement, <clears throat> working together. Mm -hmm. Then at some point, it looks like somebody crawls out of the woodwork and says, okay, you better stop that talk, all right? You're starting to rock the boat. We do not need that here. If you want to continue getting your benefits, mm -hmm. you want to continue, like say, your lifestyle you're used to, you better keep your mouth shut, sit back in the corner, and forget what you're thinking about doing. You mm -hmm. know, And that's the one thing, like say, they are not talking about. Because you and I know, again, when you listen to these people who are supposed to be representing us, they have feet of clay for the most part. We yeah. have dedicated people, but too many people, we have the wrong people in the right places that's affecting all of us, you know. Most definitely, most definitely. Um, but at the, in, in the same sense, on, on the other side of the coin, um, these individuals that we have elected, um, do I expect them to do everything? No. That would be a shortcoming on myself, on my side, um, to think that an individual, regardless of elected power, position, or whatever authority, to sit there and do everything, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to put forth that effort. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to sit there and say that that's ultimately what's going to happen. What ultimately is going to happen is, as, as I stated, we've been at war since 1995, and this is not even counting the Vietnam vets. We have, within this state alone, a huge number of veterans. Mm -hmm. And not just veterans, active duty military personnel that will eventually be veterans. Yeah. And what they need to see is us doing something. Yeah. It doesn't matter what we're doing. Um, one of the organizations that I'm affiliated with is uh, Team Rubicon. Mm. And Team Rubicon came out of two veterans, two Marines, mm. saying, hey, let's go down and help out in Haiti. Yeah. This is shortly after the earthquakes, devastations. So they went down there, and guess what they run into? Mm. Other veterans. Mm -hmm. Army, Navy, Air Force, Rangers, Special Ops, whatever. Mm. But they were U.S. military down there saying, hey, we wanted to help and do something too. Yeah. So they got together, 
And what did they create? They created Team Rubicon. And now Team Rubicon not only does natural disaster relief within the United States, they've also been identified okay. for the United Nations to help. Okay. Uh, Jeremy, I tell you, we're going to take a short break. Sure. And then we'll come back and we'll continue our conversation. And I think we have a call on that. Awesome. Okay. We'll be right back. We all play a role in keeping our community safe. Every day, we move in and out of each other's busy lives. It's easy to take for granted all the little moments that make up our every day. Some are good, others not so much. But that's life. It's when something doesn't seem quite right that it's time to pay attention. Because only you know what's not supposed to be in your every day. So protect your every day. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. Okay, you're back with uh, me <laughs> and Jeremy. <laughs> It's military in Hawaii. Anyhow, I keep getting my own program name screwed up. Anyhow, I'm just so excited about being here. But to continue our conversation. So, okay, we do have a caller. Okay. Hello, Calvin. This is Lee Lovell. Lee, how are you doing? Thanks for joining us. Hi, good. Good, Calvin. I, you know, I'm with uh, Optimal Wound Solutions. I just want to let you know some good news. Uh -huh. Recently, we were allowed to go to Yukio Kutso, the veteran's home in the Big Island, and we're assisting them with their wound needs. And just letting you know that uh, we're really trying diligently to, to get into the VA and would love the opportunity to assist those on Oahu as well. So uh -huh. I appreciate anything that you can do from your end to assist. And uh Calvin, I also wanted to let you know we sent you some information about a friend of ours that's active military Navy talking about that ship that was collided into, and there are a number of uh, of those that have lost uh, belongings, and they're trying to get a collections together. Right. Okay. Uh, I have Jeremy here, and he is um, he was stationed on the ship, and it's just a ship to the Fitzgerald. And just to recap, since we have a slight technical difficulty right now where Jeremy can't hear me. But I have Lee on the line, and we're talking about wound care, and we're talk, uh, talking about what's going on with the fits. There's a uh, effort afoot right now mm -hmm. to um, set up a um, support thing. Lee, is that correct? Yes, that's that's correct. Okay. Um, you just just to recap, anyhow, like I say, you came you came on the program a couple months ago, anyhow. Uh, for those who are not really familiar with your operation. Could you recap that, and then we'll fast forward back to the FITS and some other efforts? Uh, certainly. We are a uh, new startup company, Optimal Wound Solutions, and we go into facilities and we manage and assist with consulting for their wound care. There's a huge amount of dollars spent annually, like $40 billion on wounds. And we go in and uh, optimize what we do by using the proper dressings and techniques. And our goal is to improve the health care in Hawaii mm -hmm. and obviously the wound care. So part of what we're doing, because we have a son that's at, that he is active and he's in the Marines, and we want to help. Uh, we know there's needs with the military. So um, we got to start, uh, fortunately, just a few weeks ago um, on the Big Island. So we are work, working and assisting with Yukio, and we would love to expand to Oahu. So any assistance there would be greatly appreciated because we want to help the military out. Okay. Uh, one of the things I know you mentioned that you had to do it, Sometimes getting through the paperwork and getting to the right people. Uh, Jeremy and I were just sitting here talking about sometimes where there's efforts afoot to go ahead and do something uh, for veterans or you know, military on a grassroots level or a lower level that sometimes the efforts are thwarted by people who you know have the attitude where um, this is my area of expertise and you don't need to intrude upon the services that we're providing. Not saying these people are evil or anything malevolent that's going on, but there are some people who are very territorial and protective about what they try to provide, and sometimes they take the make the impression that, uh, you know, you're questioning their ability. And I know that the way you explained it to us before, that's not the case. And if you'd like to reiterate on that, I appreciate it. 
Certainly. You know, our, our goal and desire is to partner with the doctors that are out there. We want to, again, you know, use the term optimize. We want to make sure they're getting the ideal care for what's needed. Not every wound is treated the same, and I think what can happen at times, they get similar treatments for, for uh, dissimilar wounds. Mm-hmm. And so what happens, the healing process is uh, not going the way it should go. It gets so we want to try to improve that. We like to have some conversations with some VA doctors yeah. to kind of present what we do and to try to work work with them and help them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lee, we're getting down to the wall. We're getting close to the end anyhow. But before we go, you mentioned about the Fitzgerald. And as I mentioned, that Jeremy was... Um, I served on it. You served on it. Okay. Mm-hmm. You served on the Fitz. Uh, what's in the works right now? I know that... You mentioned that there was some sort of a relief effort that's being made to help alleviate some of the stresses or problems that some of the crew members currently are having. Uh, Yes, a a friend of ours who is active Navy, Tracy, uh, she wrote this to us. Let me just read it real quickly to you. It says, if you have any spare items, clothes, soaps, razors, toothbrushes, toothpaste, Anything you need on a day-to-day basis, please send them to the USS Fitzgerald. Many of the junior sailors on board lost everything they own. If you live in the Yokosuka area, the American Red Cross is looking for as many volunteers, donations as it can get to assist those sailors, and the USO requires assistance as well. Anything to be mailed to the Fitzgerald sailors can be mailed to USS Fitzgerald, Unit 100. 173 box 1 FPO AP 96665 I hope that helps okay one question I have and I know you may not be able to answer this but I understand and appreciate well a lot of people would appreciate the effort that's being made to go ahead and um, help these individuals but the question comes if you're in the military why is there a need to go and make a public um, call for assistance for active duty military members. Um, that kind of throws me off, but I'd say, I'm not, I, I'm quite sure you may not be able to answer that, but um, it's just something that comes to mind. But I'm quite sure as far as the response that we'll get from this, uh, you know, they're in need. We need to help them out as much as possible, and I'm quite sure it's going to happen. Um, right now, Lee, thanks for calling in. I want to get back to Jeremy, but uh, stay tuned, or you can be listening. And uh, I'll get back with you. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks. You weren't able to hear that, but the thing is, right now, there's a um, effort to go ahead and collect items for the service members on the ship. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've, are you aware of that? Uh, no. Um, that's been pretty much traditional, though. I okay. mean, um, any unit in the Army, Marines, um, any ship in harm's way, uh, air wing, anytime that there's you know been incidences. Um, the USO and other organizations have always done some type of say, hey, you know, let's help them out. Yeah. Um, okay. I was just curious because uh, just thinking of that from a lay, someone who has never been associated with the military, they hear that, okay, well, you know, we got people, there's you know, unfortunate incidents that happen, mm-hmm. you know, but why is the military not stepping up and taking care of, uh, you know, the their needs, you know, instead of making the you know, public, you know, having um, outside party entities trying to help to alleviate it. You know, it's just uh, playing the devil's advocate, not trying to make a big thing out of this thing. But mm-hmm. I know that as far as from the um, standpoint of um, showing moral support, you know, I think that that's really very important when you have individuals who are going through all this, you know, and if not, you know, even if they don't need the material things because mm-hmm. they should be provided, it's just the fact that you know that there's people out there that do appreciate and care, you know, for your efforts. Most definitely. Oh. Um, you know, the Navy, the Marines, the Air Force, the Army, these individuals are part of a larger component. You, you, you know as well as I do. I mean, it's a machine. Yeah. Um, those individuals in the Navy right now, they, they're looking at the, the Fitzgerald incident as a, hey, how do we fix this? Mm-hmm. Um, and unfortunately, this runs across the gambit, across all spectrums of the military service and governmental service included, um, is the individuals will be set to the side for a moment, um, not to discount 
them as individuals and their issues and the problems that they're going through, but they will be set aside for a second until the investigation can be concluded by the higher ups to get it to get it squared away with. And that's just the nature of the beast. Right. Okay, we're getting down to the wire anyhow, but mm -hmm. Jeremy, I'd like to have you come back on the program. We're going to do something sure. in the future about um, some kind of tribute, you know, or get more information out about what's happening with the Fitz. I want to thank you for your service to our country. I want to thank the viewers for tuning into the program. And um, I think I can say, if you got any questions or responses to anything we say here, call in, let us know uh, whether you agree, disagree. But the thing is, we're here to be informative, not to incite. And I want to thank you. God bless. Until that time.